Okay, so um, if you had me in Math 11, that might sound familiar, but basically the way I uh, usually start, start here is um, I, uh, I tell people to kind of ignore that constant and look at it with just the x terms, just to kind of keep yourself from getting confused. And then to match up the pattern, the way we were doing it is we look at this middle term and we divide by 2 and square it. That's how we got back into a perfect square. So if I divide by 2, I get 4. Then when I square it, I would get 16, which means if I added 16 there, I'd have to subtract 16 in order to balance that out so I don't change the equation. Um, the reason I wanted to go about it that way was now I can factor this piece. It's going to be x plus 4 squared, and 9 minus 16 will be minus 7. So that's how I could complete the square. You would have done this when you were graphing parabolas back in Math 11. Okay, so I'll let you try the second one just to see how uh, it jogs your memory. So if you uh, complete the square on the next one, you should get something that looks like this, x minus 3 squared minus 4. Um, 9 was the number. 6 divided by 3, sorry, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Square it, you get 9. Okay. Um, there is a formula that the textbook gives you. I'm not so much of a formula guy. I think it's easier just to remember how to complete the square. But there is this formula. It does work out if you've been given x squared and then there's b and c for the coefficients here. Um, this formula does work out to complete the square, but anyway, I think it's harder to memorize all that stuff than just to try completing the square. So you're welcome to it if that's the way you prefer to do it, but not this guy. So, um, you know, we're going to have to get to the point where if we were to look at this integral, we have to figure out a strategy. Right now, I, I told you before that um, they're not going to give you a question that says, uh, find this integral. Ha, 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 there was no integral. Right? There will always be one in the uh, AP exam. I've never heard of such a question. But uh, my point is, if we were to look at this, you might think, oh no, is this a trick question? Why did they put this here? It doesn't look like there's an answer. And um, it, it's more than likely that we probably just didn't think of the right technique. So when I look at this in my head, the first thing I'm thinking of is I start with the simplest ones and I work down to the hardest ones. So the first thing I'd be trying to find is, do I see the power rule for integration here? Well, not really. Do I see a substitution, my next technique that was you know, sort of second hardest? Um, if I was to find substitution, I would need to find a function and its derivative, and I don't see that here, right? Same thing if I went down to the next hardest one, which was the natural log. Um, I don't see a function and its derivative. I need that in order to do natural log. Um, so the last thing, the only other thing that by process of elimination it could be is somehow this is a question which uses inverse trig. So let me show you uh, the first time, just so you can get to recognizing it yourself. Um, what I'm going to do is complete the square. Funny, eh? There was a purpose to doing all that, not just to make you feel nostalgic about grade 11, but um, if I was to complete the square here, divide by 2 and square it, I'll be adding 4, so I need to subtract 4. So the integral, I could rewrite it. It would be the same thing as x minus 2 squared uh, plus 3. Okay. So when you're thinking then, if this by process of elimination leaves me with no other option but inverse trig, uh, what's the pattern that you're trying to look for when you're thinking of inverse trig? There's one pattern that all four of them sort of share. Squares, yeah, you're looking for squares, right? Like, um, it would have been nice, for example, if we had something like 1 over root 9 minus x squared, or 1 over x squared plus 16, right? Those would all kind of give you a better clue. This one, the clue is there, but it's just a little bit uh, hidden. So does anybody think they could match this, uh, the integral up with one of our inverse trig? Do you think one of those could match the pattern, possibly? Yeah, it looks like arctan. It's kind of hidden, 
But um, I would have u equals x minus 2, and I would have a equals root 3. So I could fill this in as an arctan antiderivative. Um, now, remember I said you'll, you've got to be careful that you don't make a careless mistake when you uh, do these integrals. If you didn't substitute properly, your answer in your homework might have been off by a constant. So, you know, if you were to check this, du is actually equal to dx. So we don't need to make the substitution because they're actually, they would be the same if we went to substitute. We won't be off by a constant like 2 or a half or negative 5 or, or something like that in the front. So in this case, I can just integrate it as it's shown. And it would be 1 over root 3 dx what? Just a second. Is there a star right there? over root 3 plus a constant. So uh, the reason I put a star up, up here is because I was saying we don't need to do the substitution in this case because du is the same as dx. There is no constant or any other difference that we would have had to account for when we made the substitution. Like other times, um, I'll just put, so, whoops. So like previously, we would have had something like this. Like maybe you said let u be equal to, I don't know, 2x. Then you got u du equals 2 dx's. And because of that 2, they're not equivalent. You actually have to do the full substitution in order to get up, come up with the right answer. But now the integrals, there is no difference for the constant. You can just go and do it as it is. Okay, So it's not necessary to do the full substitution like we talked about before. Okay. So um, I'm going to let you take a look at the next one and see what you can come up with. Um, again, you're going to need to think about which inverse trig it will match up to, and you're going to have to complete the square to get there. So I'll try to catch up. Uh, hopefully you've had a bit of a chance to at least complete the square. So this is going to be... So after I complete the square, I would get x uh, plus 2 um, plus 9. So again, I see the arctangent pattern here. The function is x plus 2, and the constant would be 3. So it would be 1 third arctangent of x plus 2, oops, x plus 2 over 3. Does that check out? Yeah, okay, excellent. All right, so um, when we look at the next one, can you think a couple steps ahead? What, uh, uh, what do you think you're targeting here as your uh, end result? What uh, antiderivative do you think we might be shooting for? Yeah, it's the arc secant. Um, what's the clue that you've come up with there? How did you see that? Yeah, there's something on the outside of the root. So this piece on the outside of the root, that's what give us the hint that it's arc secant. Okay, so if we're trying to line up to our sec arc secant, um, we'll ha still have to find that pattern, which isn't present just yet. So I'll start, start it off here. I'm going to have uh, x minus 1. And So there, that's how I could complete the square on the one that's in the brackets. Um, it'll look like this once we've once we've collected like terms and factored. It'll look like x minus one squared minus one, and that's convenient because, like Connor mentioned there, um, if this is my u squared, I also find one of them outside of the square root, so it does match up to the arc secant pattern perfectly. So uh, in this case, we'd say u is an x minus 1, and the constant is just 1. So my antiderivative is going to be the arc secant of the absolute value x minus 1. We could divide by 1s in there, right? There is a, <laughs> there is a similar pattern, right, like this. But it's not needed, obviously. We could just do that in the first go. 
All right, so there's one more I'll have you try. Again, as you're looking at it, um, this one has a slight twist to it, but if you, you know, you run out of options, you're looking for, does it fit the substitution pattern? Does it fit the natural log pattern, power rule pattern? And eventually you go, oh man, it don't, the only thing left is uh, an inverse trig function, but we have to figure out which one it would align with. So before you can get there, you're going to want to complete the square, make it look a little easier to, to factor and, and see the pattern, and see if you can come up with which target you're looking for here. All right, so was anybody able to figure out how to complete the square on this? Really, eh? Okay. Um, well, first of all, what you want to think about, if we were to rewrite it, um, I could rewrite it like this, and it, I don't know if it'll really give you that much help, but let's start with it. Uh, like this. I'm going to just separate those um, pieces with an x in it. And I know it says x to the 4 and it says x squared. Um, it still will factor even though there's, that's the case. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, let's just pretend those were the normal x squared and x. Okay? Just walk with me for a minute here and you'll see that it does actually factor. So if I divide it by 2 and square it, I'm going to be adding 16. Um, but the way I've written it, because I'm subtracting here, I've actually subtracted 16. So in order to balance it out, I would have to add 16 back. Okay. So uh, that means I could rewrite this as the integral. So 9 and 16 would be 25. And um, x to the 4 minus 8x squared plus 16. So although it looks like it's strange and it might not factor, um, you could do something like this and just say to yourself, if I was to make this little replacement, I would get z squared minus 8z plus 16 which does look like the normal quadratic you're used to. So the way it would factor is uh, it would end up looking like this. So inside here I'm going to have x squared minus 4. And if you were to foil that out or expand it, you'd see that you end up with the same as we started. So now, does anybody recognize what pattern this might come from? Sorry? Yeah, it's going to be an arc sine. So if it looks like the arc sine, that means u would be x squared minus 4. And my constant would be 5. But if you check a little bit uh, closer, then... Uh, it's no longer equivalent. There's this additional 2x here. So we actually have to go and do that full substitution then to make sure we, we meet the pattern properly. Right? They don't equivalently uh, match up. So if I was going to put a 2 in front, that would mean I'd need to put a half out here. And then I can make my substitution with u. So I've got 1 half the integral. On top will be du now, and it'll be 25 minus u squared, which fits nicely into the sine, the arc sine's antiderivative. So this will be 1 half the arc sine of u over 5 plus a constant. And to us, this is what we uh, substituted u as. So my final answer would be 1 half the arc sine of x squared minus 4 um, divided by 5. That's just terrible. Let me try that again. And I'll uh, move the page up so it's easier for you to see. So it would be uh, 
x squared minus 4, and I'm going to have this all divided by 5. And of course, um, I have a constant as well in there. So. All right, so um, that's the end of our techniques that we look at in AP as far as integration goes. So the list isn't quite as long as the techniques from differentiation, but uh, that's my advice is when you're approaching a problem now, you need to think of it from probably the easiest choice to the hardest. Like, can I just do this with simple um, integration power rule? Well, that would be the nicest. If not, can I do this with substitution? Can I then do it with natural log? And then everything else fails, you're probably going to have to find this as an uh, inverse trig like we've been practicing.